hello and welcome back. Thanks again for watching. It really is hugely appreciated. And today we're just going to have a, a quick look at this uh, breakdown crane along with uh, the breakdown riding coach. Great models from the early 70s. And if we have a look here, this uh, crane is working very hard to try and uh, get this coach back on the line. A little bit of high speed running, I suspect, has caused that to derail. A very perilous place for the uh, the crew to work, though, under the overhead cables with the uh, with the crane. So we're hoping that the current has been cut to protect the workforce. It really is quite a lovely thing when you look over it. It's got all these these drums to wind the cables up and down. We'll have a, a closer look at all the parts that make up the uh, make up the model. It really is quite a lovely thing. And then let's have a look at the uh, the breakdown riding coach here. This is model number R740, I think, and this just turns out to be, I think, uh, one of the LNER teak coaches just made up in bright red with a perhaps a slightly different glazing strip. If you have a look at the insert picture there, I think this model really derives from that. And then pulling the whole lot around the railway when we get the chance to, to move them is the uh, Jinty here. Now this is RO58, so it's a, a late 70s model, and it's uh, it was only available, I think, like this from 78 to 79. I think it may have transferred to a paint finish and got a slightly different model number. I have made a video of this earlier, so I'll, I'll leave a link to that. And it does have some marks on the side. It's not a perfect model, but it does run very smoothly. Let's just have a, a quick overview of the whole scene here. Now, I think the whole thing with this uh, group of models, or the crane in particular, is it drives your imagination. If you have a look at those uh, pictures there from the catalogues, the, um, the guys at Hornby tried very, very hard, I think, to sell us this model through the, uh, through the 70s. And I think between 71 and 81, when this crane was sold in red, um, they sold nearly 100,000 models. That is, uh, that's quite a, quite a large number, isn't it? So the crane was uh, released 71, I think, ran till 81 in red and then changed to yellow in 82. I think it remained that way till 95. And then uh, I think it went yellow again. It's probably still in the range, I think. And somewhere along the way in the late 80s, early 90s perhaps, there was a variation for the Thomas the Tank engine range. But uh, I'm not quite sure of the, the numbers or the, the dating on that. If we just come back to this group of models here and just have one more quick look over them. You can see it's made up in the, uh, a, num a number of items as we mentioned earlier. And we get these great little outriggers here so you can uh, prevent the crane from falling over. Now I have added a little weight to that. If you, if we'll, we'll have a look at that later. So it tends to sort of tip over like that. But I think it really is a terrific model and it's not possibly quite an operating accessory. Uh, because you, you can set it up and look at it, I think, rather than really do too much lifting with it. I think that might be a little bit optimistic. The, uh, the much older Hornby 00 model had these lovely metal outriggers with uh, adjusters on. So you could adjust them to different heights. That really was a pretty model. If you have a look at the insert picture there, I think that uh, Hornby 00 model came along in probably 1959.
I've just dug out the uh, 1982 catalogue and it sort of illustrates the changeover from the, uh, the red crane to the yellow crane. Let's just have a, a quick look here. So we can see here on uh, page 47, it says limited availability. So I suspect that these models were the, the uh, end of the range or they were just using up supplies left in, in the stores. And uh, it says uh, R739, 75 tonne crane red, but up above we've got this great big picture here. And the corner says spring 82. We've got the, uh, the yellow crane. Um, I think it's probably based on the same molding, but it, it may have been changed. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and the detailing, the paintwork certainly looks to be a lot finer. And then we've got one of those uh, four wheel coaches made up into a, a track cleaning car there. So quite interesting to see that change over. So definitely switch from uh, red to yellow in the early 80s. So let's just pop this to one side and we'll have a look at the, uh, the packaging very swiftly. So here we've got the, uh, the breakdown riding coach or the breakdown train unit. Um, Trying Hornby box, so these models just, just made it into the Trying Hornby era, era just prior to the, uh, the changeover to uh, Hornby Railways. Box is in fairly tidy condition. And uh, we've got the, uh, the name on the end there, paper label stuck on there, a little bit of sellotape over it. Price seems to be long gone. R740 coach for breakdown crane crew. I'm having trouble with my words again here. Great big splodge of uh, greeny grey paint on it there. Must have been in the way at some point, I imagine. Cellophane's in, in fairly good shape there, so we'll, we'll just pop that down. And then we'll have a, a swift look at this. Uh, the box that the crane came in, quite interesting. If we look at the uh, outside, it's one of those lovely smart um, cardboard sleeves. It's got uh, Trying Hornby, somebody's helpfully written this way up on it, but the interesting thing is this uh, this sticker here. And have a look at the end as well. Trying Hornby R739 breakdown crane set. Sorry, I'll read that again. R739 breakdown breakdown crane set, 75 ton. You can see I'm definitely having trouble with my words, but can you see what's underneath that uh, paper label? Now the label is stuck on quite well. There's a white panel behind it, and there's a there's some type behind there, and I suspect that says um, R555. It's a, a Pullman train set, or a Pullman train. And uh, let's have a look on, on the other side as well. See if we can see through the paper label a little bit more. You can just see the underprinting there. This label is stuck quite hard on there, but if you have a look at this, uh, this label, this sticky label there, I don't know whether I can just peel that up a little, the gum on it has largely gone. So if we just uh, ease that up, you can see there, it's the end of the word train, isn't it? So we'll pop that one down. If we have a look on the, uh, the reverse side of the box, you can hear the contents clanging around within it. And again, we can see the beginning of Pullman there, I think, P-U, so I think They've uh, reused the boxes. So let's just pop that down for a second. I think we've got that the right way up. We know because it says uh, this way up here. We'll just have a swift look at my uh, Pullman train. So if you look at the, the two boxes there, we can see that uh, Trying Hornby Pullman train and the end of this box has got red printing. So I suspect underneath that paper label on this box, we've got our uh, triple five C Pullman train, and you can see if you shine a bright light on it, it's very difficult to photograph. But uh, let's just have a, a swift look at the Pullman train, one of my favourite models. We'll just pull that out and have a, a swift look at it. This one, of course, coming along in 69. Um, I think it ran till uh, 71 before they, they made a final change to quite a, a strange looking, looking or liveried one. Trying Hornby Pullman train. Got some silica gel here just to try and keep the moisture down a little. It says lift tray for instruction leaflet. Sadly, no instructions with this model. Let's, we'll put that away because we're not really looking at the Pullman train today, but nice to see it anyhow. But uh, let's just slide open this box and, and have a swift look at the uh, how it's packaged inside. I do think this is quite a, a smart way of packaging them at the time. So let's pull 
all that out there. There we go, so just a, a card sleeve just bent around the packaging. I suspect that would have had cellophane around it when it originally made its way to the store. And there she is. So she does look a little different than that uh, that's uh, pictured in the, the early catalog, when she first showed up in the catalog. We've got these axle boxes picked out in yellow here, whereas these are clearly not. And uh, on these uh, little trucks here, we've got these red parts. And uh, on these, it's clearly, uh, they haven't been left in red. Let's see if we can ease that out. I'm not gonna pull the whole model out at the moment, but you can see that's just been sprayed up in black rather than leaving part of it in red. So I think there are differences in the model, the way it's been uh, sprayed up and the white area at the end of the crane there appears a little different too, doesn't it? Also, we have a, a slightly different hook there. So this is a, a solid metal hook, whereas all casters one piece, whereas the one shown in the picture looks to have a, a, me a metal block with a, a wire hanging underneath there. Let's just have a, a swift look over that. And these paper labels are quite fragile on here. That one's almost uh, away. And so you, you do tend to try and handle this when you, especially if you're attempting some lifting, as we've just seen, you need to apply some pressure to the, uh, the model to hold it on the tracks to stop it from, from tipping over. I've got the models out in the boxes, we'll just have a, a swift look over them. Here's the, uh, the breakdown uh, coach. Just have a look over her. She's very, very similar in many ways to uh, the LNART coaches. But, uh, she shares the uh, underframe of uh, many other of the Triumph coaches in the range from the uh, early 60s right through into the uh, late 70s. A very versatile piece of moulding that they just put different sides on these coaches over the years. But uh, this one's in fairly good shape. Not too many knocks or scuffs. There's a little bit of wear to uh, some of the printing on the side here. She's got all of her buffers. And uh, the wheels are in fairly good shape. I think these uh, wheel flanges are, are relatively fine um, for the period. They don't seem to struggle at all with this track work. Uh, I think we have a, a pair of securing screws. I don't know whether we can see those under there. And we've still got Triang's name. Let's uh, pop that the other way up. So there's a securing screw there and there. And there we have uh, Triang. Let's see if we can get that to pick out in the light and built in Britain. And this coach does have its weight. There are a number of coaches that don't seem to have their weights. And the, the wheels do run relatively smoothly. Lovely with these bits picked out with the uh, glazing strip in white. It's just uh, obscured. So. Uh, Quite a nice thing. Relatively short run in the catalogue, just uh, 71 to 73 from what I've read. So here we've got the uh, the multiple parts of the uh, of the crane here. Let's have a look at the uh, the match truck. Um, it's a uh, its base, I think, may may derive from another model. I'm being careful here because the uh, the outriggers or the supports. Let's just take those off before they fall. So on that uh, lovely Hornby 00 model, they've got nice metal ones with uh, adjustable um, screw screws on here so you can adjust the height. As we saw when I had this on the Super 4, the track just a few moments ago, it doesn't quite make it down to the baseboard, nor would it if you had the, uh, the foam underlay, of course, either. So uh, they're just a, quite a simple little thing. And they uh, just slot straight into the, the side of the crane there. So we'll just pop those down, there's four of those and uh, I tend to keep them 
on there, but as I turn the model over, they're just gonna fall out. So I think the base of this model may have been used to, for another, another model in the range, but I'm not quite sure which one. So it seems to be largely all molded in one piece, the base. And we've got uh, pinpoint axles. Again, these are relatively fine flanges on here, just like the coach, I think. And the couplings appear to be uh, riveted in, into the base there. And it doesn't have Triangle Hornby's name on it, and it just does have uh, Made in England under there. I don't know whether we can just quite see that Made in England. Just get that to catch in the light for you. Wheels are quite quite free running. And I've got a separately fitted top part here, all moulded in plastic. I think that just pushes in, or may have been glued in. Doesn't doesn't appear to come out. There's quite a bit of sort of detail of how you get that to catch in the light, sort of hatches and things and riveting detail right the way along there. We'll just pop that down. And we've got a couple of these trucks which make up the crane as well. And uh, they've uh, got nice, has this one got weight on the bottom of it? Or oh, it must have weight between the, the black part and the red part because it's, that's uh, more than just plastic I'm holding in the hand there. It's, it's just quite, quite weighty. So uh, we've got two of these little trucks. Loads of detail along the sides there, isn't there? I think uh, we, we switch around and have a look at the other side. And, uh, I think the detailing is probably slightly different on that side. Again, let's see if we can get that to, to pick out for you. Nice basic sort of hook and eye mechanism there to hold the, the parts of the model together. And we do have the, the D-shaped coupling on the other end there. And the, the top deck there is just painted up in black. And I say in the pictures we saw earlier, the, these parts were left as showing in red plastic, weren't they? Buffers all sort of molded into one. Quite a basic thing. And you've got quite a heavy weight screwed in the bottom there. We'll just have a look at the other one. I believe it's uh, just the same molding, just the same on this end. So there's two of those. We'll pop that down. And let's see if we can uh, be careful and hold up the crane and see if we can get a, a better look at it. Now, forgive me if the, uh, the chimney falls off. It is supposed to be separate. And now I've just got a piece of blue tack holding that on. So I believe you're supposed to take that down when it's rolling around so it doesn't crash into the bridges and things like that. But it, it happens to fit under everything on the, on the railway, so I've left it in place. I think originally it would have had a little, um, let's just pop it off. I've got a bit of blue tack there. Originally it would have had a little locating pin, but I, I think somebody has probably glued that in the past. You can see where it protrudes through the plastic part there. And it, it's, uh, when it came to me, it was just floating in the box. So let's pop that back on. Excuse the, excuse the blue tack again, losing the speech. So we said earlier, these are quite fragile. They're just about hanging on there. They've got some printing on there. They're very dirty from handling over the years. And again, it's lovely detail along the side there. I say the later models seem to have had these axle boxes or parts of them picked out. And they've got a nice bit Another paper part put on there with information to lift 75 tonnes. And there's that uh, cast, cast block there. It's uh, all in one. In the picture, it shows the hook has been like a little wire part with a, with a cast top, doesn't it? Let's have a look there. Lovely metal piece fitted in here. I'm sure there are probably names for all of these items, but I don't really know them. And it does pivot quite nicely. Now, I have added some additional weight. Let's turn this upside down. So I've got a, a lump of lead in here held in with blue tack. And that, uh, that stops it overbalancing. Without that weight there, it tends to hang forward like that the whole time with the, the weight of the jib. So I think the weight is, uh, just improves the look of it, but nowhere near enough weight to compensate for, for lifting that coach. We saw earlier I was having to hold the model down quite a lot of force to compensate for the weight of the coach. But it is, I remember, just a toy, and I think uh, just setting these things up on the railway is all part of the fun. So we can uh, raise the jib here with this one. Sorry, wrong one. This one's the jib. So we can wind that up. And then we can lower the, the hook. I don't know whether there's enough weight on that hook to go down. There it is, very slowly. Let's see if we can hold that. Let's uh, retract that a bit and bring that right back up again. You can imagine uh, a modern variation of this with tiny little stepper motors perhaps to, 
to carry out all of these functions, but I think this is just wonderful in its simplicity and it probably owes quite a lot to the, uh, the earlier Hornby 00 model. See that mechanism is all very, very simple. All plastic, I think there's a, a sprung metal part in there to, to give tension to stop these things rolling quite so freely. I love this little bit of detail on the back here, looking there. I don't know whether that's boiler or engine detail in the, on the back of the crane turret, we'll call it there. So uh, let's just have a, another quick look underneath the whole model where you've got these sleeved wheels on a metal axle. So there's closed axle boxes. I think the model's made in two halves and, and sort of glued together. And you've got these little uh, draw bars, very similar to the back end of uh, or front end of tenders. A very simple, simple method of joining things together there. So we'll, we'll just pop that down. And uh, it is just a, a lovely model. I think they made many, many thousands of them, as we said earlier. So uh, it's nice to have one with all its pieces together. And we'll bring this to a gentle stop just before points number five. We're going to uh, switch those. Let's see if we can have an overhead view of that. I've got the camera zoomed in a bit more than normal, so excuse it if it seems a little bit more wobbly. I am using the gimbal, which is probably designed for uh, things over 30 feet away rather than this sort of close-up work. And I'm going to need uh, points number two as well. So let's uh, have a go with that. And then we'll uh, have a go with uh, point number one, which is at the tail end or the beginning of the incline section, depending on your point of view. So let's give that a go. There we have it. So I think we're all set for a run around the incline. I think this um, group of models is doing quite well with the, uh, the point work. It's not really the locomotive or the coach I was worried about. It's all of those wheels on, on the crane uh, they are quite a challenge around the curves, I think, so let's give this a little power and see how we do. That looks pretty good so far, so just negotiating the climb now. Let's see if we can get a bit more closer view. Excuse the squeaky floorboards. And there comes the crane. So I'm negotiating those curves really nicely. And stand back and see if we can get the whole thing in frame now. And she is going to pick up a little speed naturally coming down that slope. So we'll just back off a little. There we go, back onto level ground. We'll hold that up and get a better view down the back of the station. And then coming into this double set of curves here. Let's just see if we can swap hands on the camera for a moment. I think we'll bring this to a stop just around before points number five again. There we go, I think that was quite successful. So I've just pulled the, uh, the crane off the rails there for a moment as we're getting towards the end of the video. I thought it'd be quite nice just to have a look at the uh, the Triumph Hornby crane with the earlier Hornby 001. Now my model is, what's the best way to describe it? Had a hard life, I think. It's, um, it's not really in running condition at the moment, uh, but you can see the, the two models side by side. There's a little similarity between them, isn't there? And we have these um, wonderful um, outriggers at the back here. Well, not at the back, we've got four, four of these. 
Let's see if I can just pull one of these off and you can see how that works. So you could make that go up and down with that screw adjustment there for um, uneven surfaces, surfaces even. So um, immensely over-engineered like, uh, like many Hornby 00 products. Let's see if we can put that down again. Oh, sorry, I'm knocking the camera completely handheld here. This crane does have a roof here and these winding handles. Now, I think this should have string on it rather than chain. This chain was on and it, um, it was held on by little bits of wire onto these uh, winding handles. So I don't know whether that was correct. Now, we find ourselves in another period of lockdown here in England and I started to clean this one up a little uh, during the first lockdown last year um, and I, I ended, didn't get to this part. So these have been cleaned a little and it had been my intention to try and get a replacement hook. I don't think this, um, let's see if we can get this here. I don't think this is an original hook. I think this is a, a replacement that's been put on at some time. I'm not quite sure. I, I do remember seeing di different ones in, in pictures. Let's just uh, remove that chain all together. Let's take that out there. It's not, not hooked on at all. So I, I think uh, it needs some sort of twine or, or some such thing there. So uh, the jib is really, really heavy. And it does have a, a wheel in there for the chain or string to, to roll over. Really quite nice. Let's uh, roll that around and have a look. You can see it's had a hard life. It's uh, damaged right through to the metal, uh, through the paintwork there. So it looks like somebody's dropped it on, on something very, very hard. But it is a, really is a wonderful thing. So if I um, just swap back to the other camera, and we'll have a, a quick look over it. So what I'm going to do is lift off these parts and we'll, uh, we'll just have a, a quick look over them. So if I lift that up, we can have a look over that. See, it's got plastic wheels and it's got the, the plastic style Hornby 00 coupling on the back end of it there. Let me put these outriggers down before they fall. Typically they won't come out. That one comes out and that one's nice and stuck in so we won't worry about that one. I think if we, if we look in the bottom there, we, we may well be able to see uh, Hornby 00's name and Made in England and Meccano Limited in there. The, know, the shadows are, are a bit uh, heavy at the moment. I've lost all the natural light through the windows at the moment. So it really uh, is quite a lovely thing. So look at that uh, articulated coupling between, between the two parts of the model there. Let's pop that down and just have a swift look at one of these outriggers a little bit more closely. Hopefully we're getting some focus on that. Isn't that beautiful? And the top end of that, that nut or machine screw is sort of knurled as well. See how close we can we can get that. Lovely thing, isn't it? I think that must be cast in, in alloy of some sort. So let's see if we can lift up the main body of the crane here. There we go. It's all hooked on. Very, very heavy compared to the, uh, the Triangle Hornby model. See that, that uh, little bit of chain is hooked on there. Let's have a look underneath there. So we don't have any flanges on these centre wheels. So it needs a little bit of work to make that a, a bit smoother running. So there is some numbering on there. You can see where those uh, outriggers would go on. Let's grab one and have a look. So they just into there like that. Isn't that neat? Isn't that a lovely thing? So pull that out again. And I think there's a, a little damage on the top there. I don't know whether there's a missing part just there. But look at the, uh, the sort of gearing detail underneath there. It really is a, a lovely thing, isn't it? So I promise I'll uh, get this in a bit better shape in the next month or so. We'll, we'll see if we can run it on the railway or something. I'll see if I can get a hook and uh, restring it and see if we can get a little bit of action out of it. So let's look at that. So it really is a lovely thing, isn't it? These Hornby double items really are quite something. Let's just pop that down. I've just got that on a little Super 4 at the moment. 
So there's another one of those trucks. We've just had a look at that, and there's the, the match truck. Lovely thing, isn't it? It's all cast as one, I think. See, this does need a little bit of work. We're very, very dirty. A little bit of corrosion here and there. And we do have a Hornby Double O and Made in England Meccano Limited under there. So it's never going to be very, very pretty when it's cleaned up. You can see the damage there. Somebody's really had a go at this. I'm not sure whether there's some transfers that, that should be along the sides there. So let's pop that down. And this is the uh, the Hornby Double O Book of Trains. We won't go mad with it. It's a, it's a lovely, uh, lovely book or catalogue. I think it served as both. It gives much information about the railways at the time. And it's a, it's a good read if you can get hold of a copy. I think this is online. If I can find a link for it, I'll uh, leave it in the description box. But, but really, what I wanted to do is just have a look at the back page here. Apart from the, uh, the dealer stamp, which seems to be Newcastle upon Tyne, it's um, Percy Street, cycles and electroplating. Newcastle, oh, Newcastle on Tyne one. And that's 24281. So, always nice to have a, a dealer stamp there, but look at this image here of the big hook, as it calls it. And there's all sorts of information about how these cranes would be in operation and there is the model with its outriggers just hooking the back end of that tender back onto the rails there really lovely thing but uh, i think that's probably it this week thanks again for watching it's hugely appreciated if you look back again next time we'll have something else from the range to have a look at goodbye now